Hey all, today I'm going to be telling you six of the best high paying jobs that you can get without a degree. Maybe you've just finished education and you've decided that university isn't quite for you. Or maybe you're already in the working world and you fancy a change to a career that pays a little bit more but you don't have the degree that you might need for some careers. Well I'll be going through six of the best high paying jobs that you can earn over £100,000 a year working in. I'll be telling you how to get these jobs what the average salary is, and what the highest salary you could reasonably expect to be, and also what you do in these jobs on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, these six careers aren't the be-all and end-all of high-paying jobs. You could definitely work in a career that isn't one of these six and earn more than any of the ones on the list. For example, you could be a self-employed bouncer and earn millions and millions protecting someone very wealthy. But obviously, the typical bouncer doesn't earn millions. The careers I'll be telling you about today basically come with like a guaranteed minimum salary. For example, as a qualified accountant, regardless of whether you have a degree or don't have a degree, you're basically pretty much guaranteed to earn at least £40,000 a year, depending on where in the country you work. But before we get started, be sure to drop a like down below and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. There's a whopping 70% of you that aren't already subscribed to my channel that watch my videos. So I'm going to have to ask all of you to subscribe to the channel so that I can keep making more videos just like these. Now let's get into the video. Now the first career where you could earn over six figures every single year is by working on an offshore oil rig. And the great thing about working on an offshore oil rig is that there's actually loads of careers available. You could be a driller, or you could be a labourer such as a welder, or a pipe installer, or a firefighter, or even many other kind of jobs on the oil rig as well. Now there's loads of offshore jobs available around the Scotland area because obviously that's where quite a lot of oil is around the UK. But where the money really is, is on offshore oil rigs around the UAE like Dubai and Abu Dhabi. And that's for two main reasons. The first reason if you work on an offshore rig in the UAE is that employers will usually pay your reallocation expenses from the UK to the UAE. They'll probably also pay for your rental accommodation on a local compound. So all of a sudden you don't have to pay a mortgage or rent, or for electricity or water, and many other things too. So all of a sudden, instead of saving say like 20 or 30% of your monthly wage, you can save a much, much bigger proportion because obviously you don't have this big expenditure going out every single month. And the second reason, and this is where it gets really lucrative, is that personal tax in the UAE is at 0% and the VAT rate there is only 5%. So all of a sudden your salary basically doubles each month because you're not having to pay any tax on that monthly salary. Now the starting salary for an offshore job like this is probably somewhere between £25,000 and £50,000 a year. You'll probably also need some prior experience in say welding or installations or firefighting. And as you start to work and become more senior, such as like a senior drilling technician or a senior installations manager, your salary could go much, much higher. Higher than £100,000, maybe even higher than £200,000 a year and you won't be paying any tax on that either. So not only are you earning six figures a year, but you're also not having to pay much in expenditure for rent, and you're also not paying any tax either. But obviously there are definitely some downsides of working on an offshore oil rig as well, or even just working overseas. And that's that really, you can't just go and see anyone whenever you please. You can't exactly go down the pub with the boys on the weekend, or you can't exactly just drive down the road to see your family because obviously you're in a different country or maybe not even on dry land if you're on obviously an oil rig. And that might end up being for six months or a year or maybe even a number of years if you do quite a big contract. So obviously it's probably not for everyone. So obviously if you did want to work close to home, the number two on the list is to be an accountant. And this is a great way to earn over six figures a year without a degree. To train as an accountant without going to university, you'll start by doing the AAT. If you've only got your GCSEs, then you'll start at AAT level two. And if you've finished your A-levels, then you'll start at AAT level three. And then once you've finished AAT level three and four, or two, three and four, then you'll move on to a professional accounting qualification, like either the ACA or the ACCA or the CIMA, which are all three-year qualifications. You can either work at an accounting company and train as part of an apprenticeship and then train as part of a training agreement, or you could just work for any company local to you in the finance department of their business. During the apprenticeship, 
you'll probably be earning somewhere between £18,000 and £25,000, depending on where you are in the country. Places closer to London obviously tend to earn a little bit more because the cost of living is higher. During the Professional Qualification Training Agreement, which is three years, you'll probably be earning somewhere between £25,000 and £35,000, depending obviously on where in the country you are and also on what year you are. For obviously first year, you'll probably be earning 25 to 30, second year is like 30 to 32, and the third year is probably around 35. After you've qualified, earnings kind of tend to depend on experience. As you're just qualified, you'll probably be earning around £40,000 a year, three to four years after qualification, probably somewhere between £60,000 and £70,000 a year. And then as you start to become really senior, say 20 to 30 years after qualification, you'll probably be on at least well over £100,000 a year. Some of the partners in top accounting firms, which is like the highest kind of senior level, earn well over £700,000 a year. And as you then go into industry, well, the CFO for Barclays earned £6.2 million last year. And that's not too bad, really. Some people might say that you need a degree to become a partner or to work at one of the top companies, and that's just definitely not true. There's a partner in my office, and I work for one of the top accounting firms, and he never went to university, and he barely even finished A-levels. I think he came out with like one A-level, and he worked at a tech company for a short period of time, and then transitioned across to the accounting company, and then worked his way up over, I think, 15 years to become a partner. Obviously, it's definitely not easy to work up and become a partner because otherwise everyone would do it and everyone would be earning £700,000 a year. But it is definitely possible and not having a degree won't hold you back. With accounting, you're typically either creating the accounts for your company or for a client or completing the tax return or maybe advising on a complex transaction and how to present it or maybe advising how to structure a company or a group for tax purposes or maybe you're reviewing the performance of the business against the accounting standards to make sure they're playing by the rules. So it might not be the most fun job in the world, but you do actually get out of the office quite a lot to visit clients. But obviously I suppose it might not be for everyone. If you're enjoying the video so far, then be sure to leave a comment down below letting me know what you currently do for work and whether you're enjoying it or whether you fancy a change. And if you do fancy a job that sounds a little bit more fun, then maybe an ethical hacker might be right for you. This is obviously a really difficult one to get into, but it could be super, super lucrative. You just need to have a lot of experience writing code and understanding computer systems. You wouldn't necessarily have to go to uni, you just need to be able to prove that you understand computer systems to a very, very high level. A lot of the big companies put out bounties for anyone that can uncover weaknesses in their system. For example, Facebook recently paid someone $50,000 that uncovered a bug, and Apple are more than happy to pay over a million dollars to people that can uncover weaknesses. Now, you probably don't want to go out there and try and hack companies left, right, and center. A lot of companies are quite good at preventing weaknesses, and you could definitely get into a lot of trouble if you uncover and exploit a weakness without telling them. So there are a number of companies out there that would hire you as a cybersecurity expert or a cybersecurity team leader, and you'd be working on building the defenses of a company's online website or an app. These companies are likely to pay around £50,000 a year, but obviously if you do work for a big company like Facebook or Apple or a huge tech company like that, you could definitely expect much, much more. So ultimately, while you might not earn millions of pounds as an ethical hacker or a cybersecurity expert, it's probably gonna be a whole lot more fun than being an accountant. The next job is gonna be fairly similar to accounting, so I'm gonna go through it kind of quickly, and that's by being a consultant. Obviously, consulting itself does differ a lot to accounting in terms of the job, but obviously a lot of the biggest consulting firms also happen to be the biggest accounting firms, such as PwC or KPMG or EY or Deloitte. There are also some specialist consulting firms such as McKinsey and & Company and Bain and & Company. So obviously all of these, you can start working there via the apprenticeship route. The job progression is pretty similar to accounting too. You probably start on the apprenticeship and then go towards a professional qualification to become a certified management consultant. 
The salaries are pretty similar too, probably starting at 20 or 30,000 and then increasing to like 50 or 60,000 after you qualify, with some of the top partners on well over 700,000 pounds a year. The job itself revolves around consulting and advising businesses how they can best improve their performance. Maybe they want to come out with a new product, or streamline their costs, or improve their revenue, or maybe even come out with some new systems. There's tons and tons of different types of consulting, like IT consulting, finance consulting, social media consulting, or like engineering and design consulting, in tons and tons of different industries, like oil and gas, or aerospace, or tech. If you've made it this far into the video, then be sure to drop a like down below and check out some of my other videos if you haven't already. Now the next job on the list is to become an engineer. And this one's really great as well because there's so many different companies that offer apprenticeships and there's so many different types of engineering as well. There's aerospace engineering related apprenticeships from companies like Boeing. There's tech engineering related apprenticeships from companies like Sky and even apprenticeships in the oil and gas design sector. There's so many different types of apprenticeships. You just need to look quite hard. The salaries in engineering are really good too. Starting off, you'll probably be on a little bit lower, say 12,000 to 25,000, but then quickly increasing to 50,000 after your apprenticeship and after your training. And then as you become more senior, you could end up earning around 150,000 pounds, especially in the oil and gas sector, because obviously there's a lot of different kinds of engineering that go into it to create the oil rigs and the pipes and the drills and bits and pieces like that. With engineering, you'll be learning so many different forms of design and how to best optimize that design for either efficiency or profitability. Finally, the last one on our list is to work in the human resources sector. Now, this one could be quite contentious because you could say that you couldn't be a HR advisor at an elite company like Goldman Sachs without going to university. And I definitely agree with that. But you can definitely earn over six figures working in HR, even if you're not working for a top elite investment bank. Providing you've worked your way up through HR assistant, HR advisor and HR manager all the way to HR director, you'll definitely be earning well into the six figures. If you've worked your way up to a HR director and maybe you're only earning around £80,000 a year, you could continue to look around for other HR director jobs at a different company that might pay more or offer you some different benefits that you value more. Working in the HR sector means you're dealing with employee related issues. Maybe you're dealing with the hiring and firing of employees, or reviewing the salaries and the performance appraisal reviews. Or maybe you're dealing with specific employee incidents or queries. HR and pretty much all of the jobs on this list are really broad careers. I didn't want to narrow them down too much or underplay what kind of work is involved. There's obviously so many different types of work involved in each of those careers and I just wanted to summarise each one quite quickly to give a bit of an example of what you might be doing on a day-to-day -day basis. As always guys, if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to check out some of my other ones. Alternatively, subscribe to the channel and ding the notification bell because that way you'll be alerted when I upload a new video. Cheers.